It's not very often you get the opportunity to meet a man who's been very successful in business, has built and raced his own cars, and has been honoured with the Order of Australia Medal for his service to the motor industry. But we're going to meet such a man. Of course, I'm talking about Bill Buckle and his wonderful car, the Buckle. I'm Jeff Morrow, and welcome to Stable of Speed. Back in the 50s, it was not uncommon for a business to build and design its own car. They built it for the track and for the road, but that was before mandatory crash testing took place and the motor transport rules were a little bit less stringent. The Buckle is one such car, two and a half litre Zephyr 6 on the engine. It was quite a performer in its day and still is now. But who better to tell us about his wonderful car than Bill Buckle himself? Bill, thanks for your time, I appreciate it. And firstly, congratulations on your OAM medal. It must have come as a surprise to you. It was a huge surprise. I can imagine. Yeah. Now, when was the first time you had a dream to build your own car? When did it all start for you? Well, I spent a couple of years in England in the early 50s, um, following the motor racing around, Moss and Hawthorne and those guys. And, of course, I've always been interested in cars and motorsport. And I went to the Earl's Court show and saw some fiberglass bodied sports cars that were made in England, mostly just one-offs, but undoubtedly wanting to produce. And I thought, um, I think I might be able to do a bit better than that. So <laughs> I came home, spoke to the, the board of the company Buckle Motors, which my father had started years before and he had since died. And I guess I convinced the board that we should have a look at the idea and uh, the board decided that they'd give me a go, so that's how it all started. Mm. Um, fiberglass was very early days, but I was very interested in the fact that you could make a car body with minimum outlay and a lot of work, but minimum mm. tooling cost. So that sort of was the incentive to give it a go. So how did you go about designing and planning the people, everything, putting it together? Well, obviously Buckle Motors had an assembly plant at Punchbowl in the out, of, out of Sydney, yeah. suburb of Sydney. Uh, so we had the space and there were some pretty switched on guys there. So I had some help with that, but it was really all my design and concept mm -hmm. but these guys of course were a big help because they'd had the experience of assembling vehicles that sort of thing i had in mind what i wanted to do we, we needed something that was light with a biggish engine and a sports car to drive on the road of course now run us through the powertrain we know i have a zephyr engine what about the rest of it yeah Okay, so the other thing that I had a bit of a help with was that the company had enough money to put a bit of money into it. We bought a, a brand new Ford Zephyr because we admired a lot of the engineering in that car. Uh, we had, the, the other alternative would have been Holden components. I wanted to have a big, big capacity engine so I didn't have to work very hard and I wanted to keep the car light. Um, we bought a brand new Ford Zephyr and dismantled it, sold the body and kept all the mechanical bits. So that was a pretty, pretty easy start and it just turned out it, it didn't cost a ridiculous amount of money and, but we had all the components and uh, it turned out that 
that the Ford parts were pretty good and Ford were happy to sell us new parts at that time. Mm. So, so Holden, Holden weren't? The Holden wouldn't, no. Mm. We, we spoke to Holden, they, and I can understand, they didn't want to do that, but Ford were happy to do it from the English Ford Zephyr. So that all worked pretty well. They had a good electrical system and Lucas was pretty good stuff mm. electrically mm. in those days. So we had that basis and I knew the sort of car I wanted to build. I'd done quite a bit of competition driving of various sorts, rallies and a bit of motor racing, mostly mm. on airstrips. In those days there wasn't much else. And that's how it all started. That's how it started. And gearbox that's in it? Ford Zephyr. Ford Zephyr three speed? Yeah. Okay. But in those days available was a Laycock De Normanville overdrive. Mm. Beautiful overdrive with mm -hmm. just an electric switch. So that gave you a, a virtually a five speed gearbox with beautiful ra ratios. Um, and it, it was quite expensive, but the people who wanted to have high performance and a nice high gear for touring mm. nominated whether they wanted to have the overdrive or not. Some well known people have raced it, apart from yourself Peter Williamson, Bob Williamson, uh, Bob Rollinghoff. Uh, there was quite a few people. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, it was very successful, and there were good drivers behind the car itself. Um, yeah. I guess the power and weight ratio really helped it, uh, and good handling and driving, of course, by yourself. Yeah. Have to include yeah. that. Yeah. But the other <laughs> thing that we we haven't really come to yet, we built a prototype which we did a lot of miles with to prove the the chassis although we did change that a bit later. Um, but the fiberglass body, which was all brand new to everybody in Australia, they weren't even making many boats in those days. Mm. Um, but the, to make the car something really good, a friend of mine, Ron Toranak, who finished up doing a lot of work with Jack Brabham on his race cars, and in fact they became partners in building an enormous number of race cars in England af after this, after our part of it. He got involved in the design of the chassis and the suspension and that was a big part of the handling of the car. <coughs> uh, but to go a little bit further, once we'd built that first prototype, it had some aspects that we weren't happy with. It was a detachable hard top or an open car. We decided we wanted to build a full coupe we changed the shape to some extent, softened the shape a bit. Uh, and another friend, a school friend, who we'd served our time together for a few years in engineering, um, he joined us, a guy called Charles Buck. And that's how the new shape evolved. He and I built a brand new <laughs> plaster, full-size plaster model, not very nice stuff to use from which it has to be a perfect finish, like, like a finished car, painted finish. Then you take the fiberglass mould, and then of course you, you can build a body fairly relatively easily. Mm. So that was the beginning of the whole thing. Now, what is the f fondest memory you have, whether it be on the track or off the track, uh, of the buckle, something that's personal to you? Uh, sitting in the garage was pretty good. That it was, I suppose, it's still not a bad looking car. In 1956 around Sydney, it was pretty spectacular. The one I, the first one we built was a metallic turquoise colour, like, like the car that I have here today. Um, I used to get a lot of people pulling up, what is it? I made it myself. Was, was quite a smug reply, I suppose. <laughs> And then, of course, they wanted to know more about it. That was good fun. The motor racing part of it was thrilling because the car was very, very competitive indeed and very safe. I never had a, a serious accident, motor racing. Well, a rock through the windscreen and then having to punch the windscreen out and finishing up on the straw bales is probably about the worst <laughs> thing that happened to me. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we did a lot of motor racing and, I must say, pretty successfully. Yeah. It was very competitive with Jaguars and Healy's and Aston Martins and 
you name it, really. Bill, thank you for your time. It's much appreciated. I, I take my hat off to you that, you know, something that was created and designed 50-odd years ago is still stunning today. It shows how good the car really is. So thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm with Bob Williamson, who owns a buckle and has raced one for many years. But uh, Bob also looks after and owns the buckle website. Bob, thank you for your time. My pleasure. And the website gives the full history of the buckle. It's, it, yes, it does. Yep. It does. Now, if you could tell the, the viewers so they can investigate more about the buckle, what the website address? The website address is www.bucklecoop.com dot com dot au it has approximately two thousand photos um, and about a hundred and something pages wow it's a big website so viewers if you want to know more uh, go to the website that uh, bob just gave you and you will learn the full history uh, of the buckle and bob congratulations for putting on such a great website because it's these kind of things that help uh, the, the history come to the people and that's great. The buckle was designed in an era where cars had their own styling, their own character, their own personality, there were no look-alikes. And just like Bill Buckle the man, the car has played a significant part in our motoring and motor racing history. So I hope you've enjoyed the story on the buckle and I look forward to seeing you again on another episode of Stable of Speed.